Good evening, Americans, and welcome to The Ed Show tonight. President Obama has the entire Republican Party on the ropes. The Republicans are just taking one cheap shot after another, trying to get back into the fight. This is The Ed Show. Let's get to work. What did you call uh, President Obama? <laughs> I called him Captain Scatino, you know, the captain that fled the ship uh, in Italy. The Obama derangement syndrome is being taken to a whole new level. Get the hell out of the United States of America. Melissa Harris Perry and Dr. James Peterson are here with reaction. The fight for Florida is ending with a flurry. Conservatives are going to come together and decide they do not want a Massachusetts liberal uh, to be the Republican nominee. The speaker has been attacking me all over the state in ways that are really extraordinary. The latest with E.J. Dion and Crystal Ball. A desperate housewife is knocking a desperate candidate. I would not sign the DREAM Act as it currently exists. Bill Burton and Joan Walsh on the Republican problem with the Latino vote. And the fight for fairness is headed to the floor of the Senate. Robert Reich on today's big news for the Buffett rule. Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. Newt Gingrich is taking a pounding in Florida. He's been outspent by Mitt Romney 5-1 to in his poll numbers. Well, they have taken a dive. But even Gingrich knows what kind of red meat the conservative Republican audience really wants. And it says something very, very important. And it's something I want to take a minute to talk about. The Obama administration is engaged in a war against religion. Gingrich has absolutely no proof that President Obama is waging a war against religion. But proof with these guys, it's really not necessary. The top two Republican candidates have been saying all kinds of extreme things about the president for the past two months. He wants to turn America into a European-style social welfare state. President Obama has been, historically, the most effective food stamp president in American history. President Obama has reversed John Kennedy's call for sacrifice. He would have Americans now ask, what can the country do for you? It tells you everything you need to know about the difference between Barack Obama and the five of us, that we actually think work is good. This extreme rhetoric is at the heart of the GOP. Now it's the head of the Republican Party. He goes on television this weekend and compared President Obama to a man accused of manslaughter. In a few months, this is all going to be ancient history, and we're going to talk about our own little Captain Scatino, which is President Obama, who's abandoning the ship here in the United States and is more interested in campaigning than doing his job as president. What, what did you just say? What did you call uh, President Obama? <laughs> I called him Captain Scatino, you know, the captain that fled the ship uh, in Italy. That's our own president who's fleeing the American people and not doing his job and running around the country and campaigning. The captain of the Italian cruise ship faces criminal charges in the deaths of at least 17 people. He is accused of abandoning the ship. Even people within the Republican Party said Reince Priebus was out of line with his comments. But he defended himself on Fox News today. This is ridiculous, Megan. Uh, the I'm analogy was made, and it was an analogy of leadership, that in a time of crisis, in a time of crisis, this president is leaving the White House and campaigning nonstop all the time. I think it's pretty clear. Actually, it was uh, paralleling the alleged criminal act of a ship captain. And that's what the head of the grand old party thinks of the president of the United States. They have no boundaries. They'll go as low as they have to go. Obama derangement syndrome is at the top of the Republican Party, and it's trickling all the way down. Remember this photo from last week with Arizona Governor Jan Brewer shoving her finger in the president's face? Well, she said she felt threatened. But now, Brewer, you know what she's doing? She's fundraising off the picture. In fact, her PAC website proclaims, I was telling him one more year. That's not what she was telling the media. She was telling the media that she felt threatened. Do people talk like that in an aggressive manner if they feel threatened? The Republican Party is creating an alternative reality to bash the president. They say untru untrue things about the president in a very tasteless manner, tasteless analogies to do what? Fire up the base? But you see, there's one thing about all of this. It's not working on the majority of the American people. President Obama's approval rating 
Holy smokes. Look at that. It's going up. A recent Washington Post ABC News poll shows that President Obama is now at a 53% approval rating. It's his highest approval rating since April of 2010. Even right-wing pollster Rasmussen has President Obama at 51% approval rating. These extreme attacks by Republicans are happening because the president was effective in the State of the Union address last week. And this is the only way they know how to combat it. He was effective because he had the facts on his side. In the six months before I took office, we lost nearly four million jobs. And we lost another four million before our policies were in full effect. Those are the facts. But so are these. In the last 22 months, businesses have created more than three million jobs. Ah, but some Republicans out there, they want you to leave the country if you support them. The Republicans will attack this president from now all the way to Election Day. They won't back off, but their strategies need to be based in reality, facts. The American people will not respond well to these extreme attacks, and the polls are showing it early on. Get your cell phones out. We want to know what you think. Tonight's question, will Republican lies about President Obama work? Text A for yes, text B for no to 622639. Our blog is there at ed. MSNBC.com. We love it when you make a comment. We'll bring you the results later on in the show. Joining me tonight is Melissa Harris Perry, MSNBC host and Tulane University professor, and also Dr. James Peterson with us tonight, director of Africana Studies at Lehigh University. Uh, Melissa, this is uh, uh, for the head of the Republican Party to compare the president of the United States to an alleged criminal. Uh, possibly facing, man, you know, man, manslaughter. I mean, how, how low will they go? Well, what I really appreciated about the, the introduction here Ed, was the point that, you know, on the one hand, we have the rhetoric of, of GOP candidates and now of the party itself. On the other hand, we have the choices being made by the American people. And I think we have to be really careful about getting too anxious. Should he apologize? I, I don't think so. And, you and don't? No, no. I mean, for, from two perspectives. From a pure political perspective, if you're President Obama, right now these attacks are working to make President Obama seem more reasonable in the light of most sort of swing voters, the people who will actually be important for winning this election. But even beyond the politics, for the, for the kind of fact-based piece, part of what this allows the president to do is to consistently look like the grown-up in the room compared to people who are just saying okay. kind of appalling things. James, your thoughts. Do you think that Reince pre should apologize for that unwarranted attack. Well, no. But first, let me congratulate Melissa on her new show. We're all really, really <laughs> excited about it. Uh, in terms of Reince Priebus, I mean, no, there's no need for an apology unless he wants to have more media time to come out and talk to the media about these things. Melissa is absolutely right. The American people understand what the choices are that we have to make going forward. And look, I'm a literary guy. I love navigation analogies, but this one just doesn't stick. The president is out on a so-called campaign trail. What is he talking about? New energy policy, new job policies. He's talking about the things, the urgent things that this country needs. But what about the respect of the office? The head of, 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 of the GOP is comparing this president to a, an alleged criminal. You're right, I, and but you, you don't think that deserves it, any it, it, kind I, of, I, I, of, of response that, well, listen, maybe I went a little bit too far yeah, on that. You know, listen. I, 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 so, James, you'll, you'll appreciate this. I'm, I'm reading right now um, uh, in the Jeffersonian era because I'm teaching a class on America's sure. First Ladies and I'm reading about Jefferson. Sure. Man, you want to talk about people who said insanely over-the-top right. things about a president. Now, some of them were true, but some of them were just completely over-the-top. I just want to point out this has been part of American rhetoric, and I think what we have to remain focused Focus on isn't the damage that it does to the president's ego or even to the office, but rather what it does in a kind of divisiveness of the American people. How does yes. this kind of language suggest to some Americans you get to be part of this sort of political process and others you don't get to be part of? Congress, also, Ed, at this point, I, I, go ahead. At this point, Ed, you know, the American people are unfortunately getting used to this kind of rhetoric coming from the right. There have been so many instances where we've been on this show and talked about so many different disrespectful things directed at President Obama, and we can talk about the office and all that, but if American people know. We understand that, look, politics has become a pretty dirty business. And yes, we want to raise the level of the discourse, but it seems like that's a long way down the path, a long way going for us in the future. Well, it is permeating through the Congress on the right ring as well. Congressman Alan West used very heated language against the president this weekend. Here it is. And we need to let President Obama, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, 
and my dear friend, the chairman of the Democrat National Committee. <laughs> we need to let them know that Florida ain't on the table. You can take it to Europe, you can take it to the bottom of the sea, you can take it to the North Pole, but get the hell out of the United States of America. So if you don't agree mm, with Republicans, mm, go ahead and leave the country, Melissa. Oh, that's right. I mean, this is, the, this is the oldest, nastiest way of throwing some people out of the American story, right? Not we're a country of people who disagree and disagree without becoming disagreeable. Not we're a country that was always built on the free exchange of ideas. Not that the First Amendment is, is powerful and that elections are how we choose leaders. But just if, 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 if I don't agree with you, then you are no longer American. Insane. And that kind of very base level, that notion that if, you, if we don't agree, then you're not even part of the story, that I think is the thing that is most dangerous, much more dangerous than any mean words we call the president. So, exactly. James, does all of this rhetoric being thrown out help President Obama and the Democrats win the House back? Well, certainly some of it does, but I mean, who is Alan West? I mean, who is this guy? I mean, I would, again, you, you know, we talked earlier about, let's debate this guy. Let's talk to him and see what's going on in his mind. He seems to me to be really off the, off the charts here. And the bottom line here, when we think about the ways in which the political discourse has been contaminated by this kind of language, I do think we need to be concerned about it and we need to address it in some kind of direct way. But I mean, also this is, I mean, can we get beyond the kind of isolationist, negative, rhetoric that's dominating the discourse, especially on the right. But, you know, we just we just we need to be better than this. We need to be better. than Well, this. I, I don't hear Democrats talking the way Jan Brewer talks. I don't I don't hear Democrats talking the way uh, Congress and West talks or I, I haven't heard uh, any chairman of the Democratic Party speak that way about the president of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. I so, I, I mean, I never heard Bob Dole talk like that. I never heard George H.W. Bush those talk are different like that. kinds of Republicans. Well, well, it, I mean, it always feels to me a little bit like desperation. Like this is this is yes. a Republican Party that that sees itself and its base slipping away. That has that has narrow. It's kind of painted itself into a corner with its anti-immigrationist, anti-woman, yeah. anti-reproductive rights. Now, anti-young people having jobs. I mean, they're they're against so many people that the small slice of the electorate to whom they're trying to appeal right now is not sustainable over the long time. That's long right. term, you feel this kind of panic coming up. But Alan that. West has taken America, love it or leave it, that there is no room for debate. If you don't think the way we think, then you should leave the country and we want you to lead the country. Listen, James, what is the next step? A confrontation? The next step for Alan West is to do a history lesson to understand there were people in this country that were saying that about people that look like him. He's really got to get a better grip on reality here. And I think that that kind of rhetoric is dangerous to the Republican Party. Melissa's right. They're shrinking. They need to be thinking about ways in which they can expand their base instead of pandering to the small minority within their base. Melissa Harris-Perry, whose new show will air on Saturday and Sunday Yay. mornings at 10 a.m. starting on February 18th. And Dr. James Peterson, thank to both of you for joining us tonight here on The Edge.